I pray it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's lecture is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. Let me read it with a reverence. Love is patient, love is kind, and is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant. An anthem by the Shalom Choir and the Nisi Orchestra is next. Senior Pastor will deliver a message titled Spiritual Love, uh, Lecture 7. Dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, all saints from the branch churches and the local sanctuaries, GCN viewers, and all children of God who attended the worship online, This is the seventh session of the sermon titled Spiritual Love. In previous, previous sessions, you heard the significance of love in our religious life. Why is love is the greatest? From today, I will explain about what love is. Of course, uh, this love is a spiritual love that you eagerly long to accomplish. Many people in the world want to have a true love but fail to experience the joy of the true love because they do not know what is the true and the spiritual love is like. Some people doubt of the existence of the true love, so they do not accept the grace of salvation that our Lord has freely given to us. Some rather reject and persecute those who preach the gospel. These things prove that now is the end of the time of the world and the true love is hardly found anywhere. But you've learned about the true love, namely spiritual love through the word of God, who is the love itself. In Romans chapter 5, verse 5 says, Hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. You can feel the love of God through the Holy Spirit dwelling within you. Through this message, may all of you clearly understand what spiritual love is and feel that love is in your heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that you may accomplish it in your heart and inspire many people so they realize that true love exists. Brother and sister in the Christ, as said in the today's verse 4, love is patient. So, what are you to be patient about? First of all, you have to be patient in the various trials you go through in accomplishing the true love and be patient with yourself. Sometimes, some can throw a rock back at you and the situation, it seems impossible to love them with thinking about how you can love them. How? If you want to obey the Word of God and accomplish the spiritual love, you have to be patient about even those people. Even if someone slanders and hates you for no reason, you have to control your emotions and patiently love Him. Thus, when you obey the Word of God and try to love them, You can be patient of the every kind of trials and the difficulties. Then you can be said to be a patient in a spiritual love. One thing I have to tell you that being patient in a spiritual love is different from being patient is the fruit of the Spirit recorded in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Galatians uh, chapter 5, 
Uh, verse 22 to 23, but the fruit of the spirits of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, fruitfulness, gentleness, self-control against such a things there's no law. Here, patient is uh, one of the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit that urge you to be uh, patient in everything for kingdom and the righteousness of God. I can say that patience in the Galatians means more broad, not something personal such as that today's lecture. The patience in the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit can be divided into the three categories. The first is to be patient in the throwing away of truth and cultivating the hurt by the truth. How patient do you have to be a throwaway all u n t r u t h for you had a score, uh, stored within until you met the Lord? We have a itchy, diverse hurt that is the compared to the field in the Bible. Some has a hurt of the f o r e i g n soil, field that refers to good hurt. Their parents are also good, so they rarely grow up with an evil nature. And the next, uh, other have a heart of a thorn field or rocky one or a field along the path. Jesus explained our heart is sorted to four different fields. If your heart is aching to the field along the path, a salvation is hard to attain. It's really hard to uh, uh, receive the salvation. Judas Iscariot, one of the uh, Jesus' disciples, had such a heart. He witnessed the the divine work manifested by Jesus but failed to nurture his heart, remaining unchanged. In the end, he sold his teacher for a few coins. It's hard to find people with such a kind of a heart. It's quite rare, though. If your heart is like a rocky field, practice the word of God, fighting your evil nature, then your heart will be better filled, a thorn field. If you keep praying and doing what to do over time, your heart is like a fertile soil field. Then, you will be obedient to Father God, only saying, yes. If your heart is inherently good, you will go to s p r i t s fast. It's also not easy to find a heart like a fertile soil among the believer, uh, unbelievers, but once they accept the Lord, they just do what to do and what to throw away. They just obey to the Lord right away due to their good heart, swiftly going to the spirit or whole spirit. All of you can be good like them by keeping the words of God, praying, being patient. So you need e d to be patient by, your, uh, by yourself. The second one is to patient is understanding others who are different from you, seeking their benefits and living at peace, peace with them. In relationship with others, you understand those who are different from yours. When you seek to understand, there's no room for misunderstandings. and uh, without any ill motions or resentment. It's about putting yourself. It's, it's about putting yourself in the other person's shoes and uh, striving to understand without bias. The third is to patient until you receive the promises of God. This includes receiving the answers to your prayer and the salvation. You have to patiently wait without being wavering in your heart until you receive His answers. 
The patience in the chapter on love is needed for you to love all others. So it is included in the patience that is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Some verses seem to have the same meanings, but those meanings can be differently interpreted by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. If you understand this difference and properly uh, apply this to each situation, you can gain greater benefits. In this sense, the word beginning in the Genesis and the John is different. The former refers to the time God created the heaven and the earth, and the latter means the time before God's creation. Let's look into the patience in detail. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 44, Jesus told us, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Who said this verse? Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Pray for those who persecute you. Are you praying for your enemy? Well, is there any someone deserve the calling your enemy? Are you praying for those who persecute you? For their blessings? I've lived that way. I've never hated anyone, even they tried to kill me, betray me, force, force to blame me. I will pray for them, God, may give them uh, strength to repent and uh, receive the salvation. I will pray for their blessing. I will never pray like, Father God, please help them get schooled. They are too much to endure. I will never be nagging like that at Father God for that. I always pray that the sought love, it's not just words, but it came from my heart. All of you should have a such a love and it should become that way. Then you can achieve the peace with everyone and swiftly go to s p r i t Who is your enemy? The compact uh, Oxford English Dictionary refers to enemy as a person who is uh, actively opposed or hustles to someone or something. Can you love your enemy who is actively uh, opposed to you or hustles towards you? Can you pray for those who unreasonably hurl cursing words against you and persecute you because you believe in our Lord and preach the gospel? Our, our Lord came down to the earth for sinners, and He told us to love our enemies and pray for those. I, I thank you who say yes about my questions. Who is the enemy of Jesus? The enemy is the devil forces of darkness, the sinners who obey them. In this sense, you used to be an enemy of Jesus before you accepted Him as a Savior. Since Adam, since all men have been obeyed, uh, obedient to the devil, that is the enemy of God, and they too have sinned, so you are a children of the devil, and you continue the sinning that was against that will of God. Jesus came to the earth to save mankind, all of whom were marked by this sin, but what did they do? Jesus preached the gospel of heaven and healed of many sick of their disease and practiced the love by sharing food. Nonetheless, they crucified Jesus, who did only good things. They re- re- ridiculed and humiliated Jesus, and he was hung on a cross, not knowing that Jesus took the burdens of all their sins. They shouted, Come down, if you have the, have the power to bring death back to the life, then we will live in you. They who were actually servants of the Lord spat, smashed on him, and mocked him. Jesus endured them quietly and as said that in Luke chapter 23, verse 34, He prayed for them, saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Jesus 
As you know, they welcomed the Jesus singing Hosanna and placed their cloaks on the road as he passed by the riding a donkey. However, they quickly turned and accused Jesus, saying, Crucify him. Nevertheless, they disputed what they did. Jesus prayed for their forgiveness. Our Lord Jesus was a long patient of the mankind who was the enemy of the God, and He loved them. That what happened? Anyone who believed in Jesus as the Savior and accepted Him is released from the savory of the devil and becomes children of God by the amazing work of the salvation. Thus, the power of the patient's love is so great. How patient are you being? Are you patient with those who slander and hate you? Or are you having difficulties in being patient with your wife, husband, children, and brothers and sisters in the Christ? Some people transact money with their siblings or fellow believers. It's said that this often leads to arguments or even the end of their friendship. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 39 to 40, Jesus commands us, But I say to you, do not resist an evil person, but whoever slapped you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue you and take your shirts, let him have your coat also. How audacious he is. He asks you for a shirt. Even when someone behaves like that, the Lord encourages you to give, give it to him and also coat. It means you should love them more and more. In our time, many people bring uh, accusations against each other in the court when he or she causes even the slightest harm or loss to them personally or to their positions. Sometimes they accuse their wives, husbands, parents, and children. If they are patient and stay silent, they may be ridiculed as a fool by the people around them. But our Lord tells us to turn your left cheek when someone slaps on your right cheek. And if he wants to sue you and to take your shirt, the Lord says, give him your coat as well. It is difficult for you to turn the other cheeks after being stuck on the right one. If it's a way to maintain the peace, it's good to turn the other cheek. He urges us not to pay back evil for evil, but to be patient of the treat the other with goodness. Are there any of you who say you cannot do that if you, the charges are false and you have ill feelings about it? But if you have faith and love, you can do it. What it is that you must you have faith in the belief. You have to believe in the love of God, Father, who was patient with you and had mercy on you, who crucified His only Son, Jesus. If you really believe that you have received such a great love from God, you can forgive and accept the one who has accused even the most serious harm to you. It's even more remarkable that we've received this love from the Immaculate God, the Lord Almighty. How can we harbor hatred or disdain for anyone when we've been shown, uh, showered with uh, such a love? We should be able to pursue the holiness with every person despite endlessly teaching this truth. It's It's hurting to see people still cling to their earthly desire, unable to let go of their hatred, stuck in their worldly ways. The Spirit is so wonderful. By going to the Spirit, we can receive the blessing, enter the better place in heaven, remain free from the illness, accident, and the calamities on the earth. Yet, it's truly saddening to see people offer the path to hell, rejecting the, all these good things. How tragic is that? All for the fleeting pleasure of the flesh, the 
transient joy of the earth's desire, how foolish can one be? If you love our God who has loved you, the point of the abundance, abandoning His only Son and our Lord who laid down His life for you, there's no one whom you cannot endure in the love. How long do you have to be patient? Some of you may have a struggle to suppress your anger, hatred, hot temper until you burst into the, those emotions when you reach the limit. If you are introverted, you do not express your emotion but severely suffer from those who you hate, then you have a mental sickness or disease because of a stress. I pray for the patients suffering from the anger disorders. If they were in their situation, I would probably experience anger issues a hundred times worse. Could you please tell me how one acquires these conditions? What triggers anger disorder in someone? I would probably experience anger issues a hundred times worse. If you temporarily suppress your anger, it is like a spring that returns to the original position shortly after it's released. Trying to be patient firstly, like a spring being pressed t h e bouncing back, is pointless. This is spiritual patience that our Lord wants you to have makes you be unchangingly patient to the last moment. When you do not store hatred and ill feelings in your mind, but instead throw away the root of evils that cause ill feelings within you and change your heart into the mercy and the love, you can possess this spiritual patience. It's not about just gritting your teeth and enduring. It's about enduring by pulling out these things. Even eventually, there will be nothing left to endure. If you have a completely cast of all kinds of untruth, including hatred, envy, and jealousy, and instead of you fill your heart with a special love alone, namely if you have accomplished your heart into the spirit, you will never feel it hard. On the contrary, if your heart is filled with untruth, including hatred, dissension, envy, and jealousy, you will see only weak points of the others and the dislike and the hate them, even if they are good. It's like uh, everything you see looks dark when you wear a black glasses. This sense looks different depending on the color of the glasses you wear. If you wear a white lens, the world appears white, likewise with a clean heart. you can see something clean. Or with a dark heart, you can see something dark. If you have something weak, others seem to have something weak. Or if you tell a lie, others seem to tell a lie. But if your heart is full of love, even one whom you cannot understand at all looks lovely to you, no matter what kind of transgressions and weak points he has, you will not dislike him. Even if he is serious of hatred and practices evil towards you, there is no hatred against him within you. This is spiritual patience is found in the heart of the Lord who does not break off the better reed and will put out the smoldering weak. This heart of the patience is also found when Stephen, Stephen prayed to God, saying, Lord, do not hold this sin against them, for those who were stoning him to death because he was preaching the gospel to them. He proclaimed this gospel. So people got really upset, you know, because he pointed their sin. But then in God even more intense, he said that heaven's door opened. And behold, our Lord stood at the right hand of the God's throne. However, the crowd couldn't see the heaven's door, even though they looked up at the sky. The heaven's door opened, and oh, t e c k a n Stephen knew the situation was dire, but he couldn't keep quiet. So when he said he saw the heaven's door open and our Jesus Lord standing at the right, of, right hand of the God's throne, They just pick up the stones and the stone and have to that stoned him to death. Was it difficult for Jesus to love sinners? 
not at all. His heart was the truth itself. Peter once asked Jesus in Matthew 18, 21, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him up to seven times? In front of Jesus, he thought forgiving up to the seven times would be more than enough. Asking, will you forgive uh, even up to seven times? Up to seven times? Jesus answered him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to seven times seven. This does not mean that we have to forgive up the 70 times seven, 490 times. Number seven means the perfection. So when Jesus told them to forgive up to the 70 times seven, it means to forgive someone completely. This conversation proved that our Lord Jesus has limitless mercy and forgiveness. You cannot change hatred into love in a single day. You have to try your best to change it unceasingly. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 says, Be angry and yet do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. If you get angry, You are said to be at the first or second level of faith or the early stage of the third level of faith. So, if you are getting angry, you should know that you are still at the first or first level of faith or maybe the second level. You haven't even entered the third level of faith yet. Oh dear, you are an elder now, right? Some elders are getting upset over tri- uh, trivial matters. I, I haven't witnessed it personally, but when I hear about that, imagine that you are building a house, but the neighboring harass you. You're definitely not breaking any law, but they're still giving you a hard time, so you just end up getting frustrated, end up arguing with the neighbors. Even among our elders, there's someone who can't let go of anger. Even among the servants of the, our Lord, some may not show it on the outside, but harbor resent, resentment within. It doesn't make sense. A servant of the Lord behaves like that. Someone in a teaching position shouldn't act like that. Elders, please don't get upset. Just because our opinions clash and don't align does mean, even, it, even if it's within the context of God's word, you should hold on to your anger. Please. Please don't let your emotion run high. If you don't hold back your anger and keep your temper, your hands stay still. But when you're angry, even in the middle of the calm conversation, your hands start to move, in, move involuntarily. Now, if you more ang- uh, angry, now both hands are up in the air, waving, then... It goes further. Your whole body started to move. This is testament to, um, tes- testament to the how much anger you've been holding back. When you realize someone like that, now you should be mi- mindful that remove the anger. That's how you become the holy. Then blessing come up on you spiritually. What you've sowed and what you've piled up all of the multiples into the blessing 30 ta- times, 6 times, 100 times. Even if you get angry because your faith is yet weak, you must not harbor the anger until the sun goes down, but throw it away. If you still hold your anger all day long, it says you are at just the first or second of the level of faith. You don't need to hold it, just to put it aside. It's possible for you if you are at the third stage. It means that you have to ceaselessly do your best to throw away untruth, including ill feeling and a quick temper in accordance with the level of your faith. If you have thrown away all kinds of untruth, there will be no evil within you and you will not hold anger in you at all. Then you will never get angry because there s no characters of anger in you for you to suppress. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in heaven will you have a be patient? In heaven there s no tear, no sorrow, no pain. So there is no any world words alike. 
ill, ill feeling or temp, hot tempered. The words you've used on the earth will be trashed in the heaven. They're not useful anymore. The word ha- hatred, there's no word in the heaven because you don't hate any, anyone there. The word long patient, you can't find them there. There's no any words like that. You know why? There's no human being so who is jealous or has something ill in heaven. No reason to use the kind of worldly words there. Of course, our God doesn't have to be patient in anything because He is love itself. The reason that the Bible says that love is patient is because as men, we have a soul and a thought and a mental framework. God wants to help people understand. The more you have to throw away evil and accomplish the goodness, the less you need to be patient. How about you? Are there only a few to whom you have to show the patience? As much as you accomplish the spiritual love, you are willing to be patient with those who have weaknesses. You will be able to patiently and peacefully wait for them to change with love. If you are in a situation that you have to be patient with someone, whether you want to or not, please hold fast the word of truth and rely on the love of God so that you can patiently endure and overcome everything. Then your heart will be cleared by the fill with the truth and you can grow in the spiritual love. The sinful nature so hidden deep within your heart can be thrown off. At the same time, you have to endeavor to look at the person whom you once hated so much with his eyes of love and treat him with goodness. Through this process, the hatred will disappear and you will come to love him. You will feel so happy. Our Lord Jesus said in the second half of the Luke, uh, chapter 721, For behold, the kingdom of God is in your midst. People say it is like they are in heaven when they are so happy. Similarly, the kingdom of heaven being in your mind refers to you having cast off all untruth from the heart and having filled it with the truth, love, and the goodness. Then you don't have to be patient since you're always happy and joyful and full of grace because you love everyone around you. Our Father God rejoices so much in the seeing His children who are good and abounding in love. She said in Acts chapter 13, verse 22, after He had removed him, He raised up the David to be their king, concerning whom He was testified and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, the man after my heart who will do my will. David was the man who thought after the heart of our Father God. How did he go about this in seeking after the heart of God? David did not pose the weak person, but treated him with the goodness of just the way Jesus told us, turn out left cheek to the, the other when he slapped you on your right cheek. King Saul tried to kill the David when David was the commanded and the favored by the people more than he was. David has to flee from the soul and suffer from the many difficulties. In the 21st chapter of the 1st Samuel, we found that King Saul chases David and went into the wild, wilderness of the e n g e d i Saul sent his troops to kill David. He rather led the troops to find him. King Saul and his men wanted to rest during the chase and went into the cave in which David and his company had hidden themselves. King Saul and his men did not know that David and his fellows were deep inside a cave. It was an excellent opportunity for David to destroy the soul. In the verse 4 of the same chapter, the man of the David said, Behold, this is the day of the which the Lord said to you, Behold, I am about to give your enemy into your hand, and you shall to do him. And they urged David to kill Saul. You see, David's generals and the servants have evil tendencies like that. If David had also had evil inclinations, he might have influenced their opinions, but David arose and secretly cut off the edge of the soul's robe while Saul was asleep. 
David caused no harm to Saul, but his conscience bothered himself because he had cut off the edge of Saul's robe. In other words, David acknowledged that God has rejected Saul. However, because Saul is an anointed king chosen by God, David did not want to personally kill him, even though God has already rejected him. And David restrained his men from the rising against Saul, saying, Far be it from me, because of the Lord, that I should do these things to my Lord, the Lord anointed, to stretch out my hands against him, since he is the Lord anointed. After that, Saul arrived and left the cave. David called after Saul, saying, My Lord, the king, and when Saul looked behind him. And from the verse 9 and below, David called my father and confessed that he had no desire to kill Saul at all. Saul purged the innocent David to kill him, but David humbled himself, illustrating himself as a dead dog. Those good, good, uh, those good deeds and the word of the David touched the heart of the weak soul. The following verse, when David had finished speaking this word of a soul, Saul said, Is this your voice, my son David? Then Saul lifted up his voice and wept. He said, You are more righteous than me, for you have dealt well with me while I have dealt wickedly with you. In the face of the goodness, evil eventually crumbles. Not everyone touched by the goodness is badly transformed, but most are eventually moved. David moved the heart of the, that weak soul with this loving patience. That's why God said that David sought, uh, sought after God and the, God appointed him as the next king of the Israel. Our Father God never forgets your good deeds, but repays you for whatever you have done. Moreover, He makes His kingdom more prosperous through the good deeds of the, His children. The members of the m e m i n Church and I have been uh, wrongfully humiliated, persecuted, and wrongfully accused since its founding. Because this church has shown the power of God and the miracles, we have not opposed or condemned the persecutors according to the law of the world, but instead we've treated them with the goodness and the patience in love. Remaining silent against those w e a k the people seems to be a foolish and a loss, but our Father God has brought the amazing work of the Holy Spirit and the revivals. Let me conclude. Let me conclude it. Dear brothers and sisters, our Father God really loves and rejoices with His children who are able to show the patience and the love to those who act with the evil towards them. It's because God is God of love. r e a d Matthew chapter 5, 40, uh, 45. He causes His Son to rise on the evil and the good and to send the rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. God hopes that even the weak people will change, and in the quality of the human patient, He sends even the weak to both the sunshine and the rain as well. He is the God of the mercy. Therefore, if you respond to the evil with the way, evil, as He said, the palm, Psalm chapter uh, 37, the 8, cease from the anger and the forsake of wrath. Do not fret. It lasts only to evil doing. But if you forgive and love a w i c k e d people with patience by the looking to God will reward you, you will inherit the beautiful land, namely you will enter the better dwelling places of the heaven, as said in the following verse 9, for evil doors will be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord, they will inherit the he- land. Therefore, I wish all of you to make this message your hope and fill your heart with a special love. May as many souls do not believe in the no truth of love come to the fill of the love of Father God and return to the bosom of our Lord in the name of the, our loving Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Let's pray keeping the mind of today's lecture. Amen. We received the senior pastor's prayer for the second video. Place your hands on the yellow or weak parts of a body. And if you're not sick, place your hands on your chest to receive the answer by faith. Hallelujah, Almighty God, our loving Father.
Please lay your hands all believers who are receiving this prayer now. Show your works of the transcendence, uh, trust in the time and the space under those who are receiving this prayer through GCN, Internet, and the satellite TV in branch churches and the local sanctuaries and all of the children of God around the world. Give them the faith to believe from the heart to drive away the negative thought and the doubts of all tests and the trials. From head to toe, all organs, joints, nerves, tissues, and cells, whatever the sick parts may be, burn, with the, burn them with the fire of the Holy Spirit and the original light. In the name of the Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and the Satan, all diseases, germs, and the viruses, and the infirmities, go away, light come. Please scorch all their incurable diseases with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Drive away all endemic diseases, including malaria. All infectious, uh, infectious diseases, including clu- cold, flu, and the fever, go away. Protect them all for, uh, from all kinds of uh, germs and the viruses. Heal them all of the stomach, lung, the river, breast, or urine, and the intestinal cancers, AIDS, leukemia, cerebral stroke, high and the low blood pressure, diabetes, uh, thyroid problems, and the heart, lungs, and the women disease, and the all impl- inflammations go away. Heal them about polio, stroke, arthritis, and herniated disc, back pain, headache, neuralgia, and all other pains disappear. Epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and other mental disease go away. All kinds of paralysis be loosened and get up to walk and leap. Let the eyes see, let the ears hear, let the blind come see, and the deaf hear and mute to speak. Heal them of a after effect of all kinds of accidents. Fix their broken bones. Resolve them from the burns. Let the heat and the burning sensation go away. Father, please have all skin be tacked. Be cleansed from the all kinds of drug addictions, poisoning, and the substance abuse. Let the dead nerves, the tissues, and the cells be regenerated. Bring the dead back to the life. Give them the blessing of the conception. Receive the blessing of the conception in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command the enemy devil and the Satan, the ruler of the power of the air, the evil forces of the heavenly place, their servant, go away. Go away, evil clean force that deceives the spirits of something. Something alienating and all forces of darkness. Loosen the bond of the weakness. This darkness, go away. The light come. Father God, give them strength to cry out in the prayer and the power of uh, power to cast off the sins and become the sanctified. As their souls prosper, let all the things go well with them, and let their families be evangelized. Protect them all kinds of accident and disasters through this week, and bless them to lead a prosperous life without any problems. With the fiery walls of the Holy Spirit, the heavenly hosts and the angels, and with their, your blazing eyes, protect your children, their families, workplaces, and the business fields. Please let students have a wisdom and the smartest, and have them be willing to study with fervor. Please do not let them lose their heart to the worldly things, and let them love God more fervently. Whether your children eat or drink and whatever they do, let them live a life glorifying your Father God. Let them be able to testify about the living God, saying, I met and experienced God and received His answer and the blessing. Father God, thank you. Be glorified alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. <laughs> 